Judges award points according to the difficulty and completeness of the stroke. All these techniques require great balance and strength. To maintain a good posture, moving the hands and feet properly is vital. Uki-oyogi, or floating swimming, require the swimmer to lift as much of their torso out of the water as possible. High scores are awarded for keeping a high body position. From underwater, we can see that both knees are pointed outwards as the swimmer treads aggressively with the soles of his feet to gain good buoyancy. The swimmer's hands, on the other hand, push back on the water to produce forward momentum. This technique is known as kakiwake. To perform this series of leaps while swimming forward requires an extremely strong kick combined with powerful arms. It's not like standard swimming and involves transferring the power of your kicks through to your fingertips while keeping your head above the water. It's not easy. I love Nihon Eho, as you have to remain graceful while swimming fast. Also, because there are so many different styles. At Nihon Eho tournaments, swimmers are usually split into different age groups. The focus on grace and beauty allows swimmers to carry on competing even as they age. In the senior team competition, middle-aged and elderly swimmers show off some refined techniques. Refined, efficient swimming is the true essence of Nihon Eho. It's about beauty and strength, not just speed. A good swimmer can look fast even if they are not. The more you swim and the older you get, the more you can find your own way of swimming. The learning process is never complete. So, I just want to keep on going. Nihon Eho, an elegant pastime in which practitioners aim to become one with the water. As you get older, the more skillful you become, making it an attractive sport for all generations. Mm. You know, the beauty of Nihon Eho is not only swimming fast, but also performing the technique beautifully mm -hmm. as your, your original way of uh, beauty of the, the mm. moving. So it's really interesting and very mm. deep. But some of those techniques were pretty <laughs> unusual, weren't That's it? That's true. <laughs> so let's check out this gentleman. He's in his late 60s. So he's not sleeping, everybody. <laughs> it is really incredible how he keeps his balance in water, Miyako. Right. Like to, to know your own balance, mm -hmm. you actually need to find your axis of the body. Right. Once you find it, uh, of course you need practice, uh, it's not that difficult. So, but yep. he's like right. not moving. <laughs> this is great, huh? I mean, of course you need to have uh, air in your lung so air that you lung. can float well. Okay. But um, yeah, it's really important to know this kind of technique to float so that you actually conserve energy in the ocean, for mm. example. Right, so one technique which is currently attracting much interest is this. It's called Uitemate, which means float and wait. Uh, it's a simple technique for surviving in water, right? Right. You know, um, maybe I should explain a little bit. To float safely in a relaxing uh, mm -hmm. way, keep your hands in the water. Hands in water. Yeah. And if you have an item that floats, like water bottle, okay. then hold it against your chest. Chest, mm. okay. And breathe deeply and fill your lungs with air okay. so that you can have air, you can float easier. And uh, keep your shoes on if they are light. So that's really important, important. as well. And okay. float in a spread eagle position. 
So the main purpose of doing this position is just relaxing so you can conserve energy mm -hmm. and wait until you are rescued. Yeah, but it must be difficult to be relaxed. Exactly. For example, when you have a clothes on, the mm -hmm. clothes are heavy, so you feel already panic. Mm -hmm. Then you have like a, a short breathe, okay. then you don't, uh, your lungs cannot be open really well. So I'm just try to relax, and if you just open like this, just the this position, mm -hmm. then you can be relaxed and you can really float. Mm. Yeah. I heard that some people have survived in water in this position for 20 hours, drifting for up to 40 kilometers. Mm. That's the reason why sometimes when we are teaching uh, synchronized swimming or swimming in elementary school, we uh, teach that float skill with mm -hmm. clothes on mm -hmm. uh, with kids. It's important that we know this skill, right? right? Yep. And now they have a campaign to promote this uitemate mm -hmm. as a global watchword for drowning prevention. Yep. Anything happens, yeah, it's a great to learn. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Miyako, for joining thank us you. today. Thank you, everybody, for watching Sports Japan, and we'll see you next time.